Okay, I want to talk to you guys about a feature in Studio One called bouncing. So what I'm going to do is first pull in some instrument. I'm going to play something real quick, and then we're going to bounce it. And I'll explain why bouncing kind of exists and how I use it and good ways to use it. Um, I've been on a native instruments kick lately, which is the, the type of instruments I've been playing. So I'm just going to load native instruments contact. And in the last video I talked about, you could get from uh, native instruments. It's called complete start and it comes with contact and a bunch of this uh, factory library stuff, cool factory library stuff from native instruments. And uh, all right, here's a synth. Turn off the sequence. All right, let's just play something with that, just to get something going. So, what's our tempo? Two, three, four. I want something slower. Um, let's do eighty-eight. All right, here we go. Two, three, four. All right, that was bad. Let me do something else here. Here we go. Two, three, four. Let's just quantize it. It's pretty cool, actually. All right, let's uh, let's throw some drums in there. Let's go to files. I saw pop drums in here. Let's just do something easy like that. Pop drums, and let's hear how these sound. <laughs> cool. And let's pull in another instance of contact and lay down some bass. So again, I'm going to go to the factory library, which comes free with complete start. By the way, I'm not um, affiliated with Native Instruments at all. They haven't given me anything. I just like their stuff, and I'm on a kick. I'm on a Native Instruments kick. So don't be accusing me of stuff. That's cool for a bass. Let's use that. Here we go. Two, three. All right, let's turn off that sequencer because I don't like that sequencer. And let's hear how the bass sounds. Cool. Let's hear how it sounds with everything else. All right, let's take a pro EQ here and chuck it in there. Actually, I, I haven't I haven't tested out the Ozone EQ. Why don't we test out Ozone 11 EQ? Again, comes free with complete start. I'm not affiliated with Native Instruments. And let's just boost the bass up. Is it me or does it seem like that's not doing anything? Is this even on? Let's open up the inspector. It's in there. Let's add one more thing. So let's uh, go instruments, contact. Let's add like a nice pad sound. Uh, I think this ethereal earth also comes with complete start. So let's just see what's in there. Okay, getting somewhere. 
Cool. Okay, there's too much going on there. There we go. That's for, that's for some pretty stuff. Okay, cool. So we have four tracks. It took me a while to get them, but I got them. Now, bouncing. So running four virtual instruments might be a little hard on my CPU. Watch when I hit play. See, the CPU's pushing a little bit. Um, and say I wanted to add an effect to just a part of my song, not the whole, or part of a track, not the whole track. There's a couple ways to do it, but one thing I like to do, and it also relieves stress on my, my CPU, is let's just say I'm going to take this little range here, and I'm going to right-click on it, and I'm going to go to Event Bounce Selection. And it puts this new on a new track. Now, what bouncing basically does is it takes a virtual instrument and whatever else you have selected, and it kind of um, blends it all down and um, renders it into an audio clip, uh, which is going to sound exactly the same. Watch. I'm just going to play this one clip, and then I'll play this audio clip. It'll sound exactly the same. That's the virtual instrument. Here's the bounced audio clip. Sounds exactly the same, but this is audio. So you can do audio th cool things to it. Like, watch this. I'm going to right click on it and I'll split it at the grid. Split a grid. Now we got little pieces and I could... Uh, kind of chop up the little pieces a little bit and make it sound like this. It's pretty cool, right? So, uh, and it's very easy on the CPU because there's no effects on this and it's just a straight up audio file. So that's one use of bouncing. So say I got my song here. So here's my song from the beginning. And say I want to add another effect to this bounced track. So let's go to a personas, instrument, or effects, and maybe put like a phaser on it. That might sound cool. Yeah. Doesn't that sound cool? So, uh, by the way, when you bounce something, it's going to mute the original part of it and then give you the bounced version. Unless you unless you bounce it to a new track, so I'm just going to unmute that so it's it's unmuted. And I, what I wanted to do is actually have the bass here, then the drums come in, then the riff, and then maybe do a something like this, and then maybe bounce this one too, right? And then just put an EQ on this guy and take out all the lows just for fun. You'll hear what I'm you'll hear what I'm doing here in a second. Just take out the lows. And put maybe like a crazy delay on that part. So put analog delay. Ooh, I put Empire. But let's hear how it sounds. 
Nah, a little too much. I just wanted analog delay, actually. Like this. Good enough. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm, I'm bouncing things, and then I'm able to screw around with the bounced version, add effects, and not it, not worry about it um, ruining the original version because the original version's on its own track and it's doing its own thing. Sometimes I like to bounce things when I feel like mangling them or adding lots of different effects to them, and it's easier on the CPU, and it won't screw up the original track because the original track is safe and sound up there. You know what I mean? So let's hear how it sounds coming out of there. So this is like the bridge of the song, like if we're going to do a bridge and then maybe bring a drum beat in and we could like, let's just duplicate this track and put this drum beat on this own, its own separate track. So now we can add our own effects to it too. There is other ways to do this, but this is one I'm showing you for this video. So we, now we have like a cool drummy kind of bridge. And then let's use the arranger now. We're going to call this like just the verse. And then... Actually, I wanted that to be the verse. This other part we'll call the intro. By the way, if you want to change the colors of your arranged parts, you can do it up there. And then we got a bridge here. Right click, bridge. To make it red. And so now we can just hit hold alt and bring the verse back over here. Duplicate it a couple times. And so here's let's hear how our song sounds. the idea so bouncing is basically taking something you have on a virtual instrument track and rendering it to audio i think it could also be i think oops you might be able to take a couple things too and bounce them i'm not sure it's, no no it's, whatever you have selected it will it will bounce it but uh, it basically takes a virtual track and turns it into an audio event and then you can mangle and add effects in the audio event and not really crush your CPU. So for me, it's a quick way when I want to do something kind of drastically different than the original track. And I don't want to use like automation because if I get into automation, then I have to worry about the automation curves um, being all like, OK, I got to make sure it's perfect. Make sure it's perfect here and then bring it down here and then bring it up here. When I don't want to mess with automation and I just know I want to kind of mangle a track up a little bit. I, uh, I'll bounce it to another track so it's audio and then just do audio fun things to it, like split it at the grid like this guy down there and uh, do different things. Like I could even take out chunks of this because it's just split. Split to the grid, so who knows? Just, just have fun with it. Let's see how that sounds. <laughs> That's actually cool as hell. Listen to that. 
Pretty neat, huh? So I'm just chucking effects on here. And then go back to the song. So that's what I like to do. Use bouncing when I'm doing something drastically different. All right, hope that helped. See you guys.